Cool. Look at that. Look at it. Craftsmen made tools to last in the old days. Not now, though. In the old days, yes. That's from the old days. You found it in the shed when we moved in. Did I? Yes, if I remember rightly, you said you were going to send it on to the bloke who'd left it behind. Well, he's welcome to it now. A load of old rubbish. <laughs> Don't go on at the fork. It must have dug about 6,000 acres by now. I wasn't digging with it. I was banging in a stake with it. <laughs> what do you use for digging? A sledgehammer? If they'd made long bows out of this tap, we'd have been in a fine old set at Agincourt, wouldn't we? Sorry, my liege, you came away in my hand. I'll have to chuck me arrows. <laughs> And it's raining. You are having a little moan, aren't you? Well, it's important. We need all the daylight hours we can get. The nights are drawing in, you see. Yes, well, they usually do in autumn. Yes, but they're keeping us inside. We shouldn't just be sitting about doing nothing. True enough, you shouldn't. No. We should be using these long evenings like, um, like the crofters do. They don't just sit about chatting on the long evenings. They mend their nets and knit fair our jumpers. You can't knit. Neither can you. Well, mend your nets. I haven't got any nets. I'm just saying we should be utilising the time. Oh, yes. You mean like mending our working clothes, that sort of thing. Yeah, exactly. Now, you, for example, should be uh, doing exactly what you are doing, which makes you a clever dick. <laughs> any floorboards need nailing down? No. Creosote the chicken house. It's too dark in the garden. Well, I can't sew, can I? I never claimed to be able to sew. Well, mend your fork! Yeah, I was going to do that. <laughs> I had that in mind you do that before you even said it. So if you're at home of an evening and you've got a broken fork, that's the kind of thing you should be doing. Well, that's typical, isn't it? Just when you get started on a job, interruptions. <laughs> Hello, Tom. Say hello, Mark here. Hello, Margot. Well, what's it on the telephone? I can't be. I haven't got a telephone. <laughs> My telephone. Oh, I see. Thanks. Who is it? I don't know. It's a Mr. Coles. Never heard of him. You haven't been gardening in a dinner jacket, have you? Certainly. You've heard of gentlemen farmers, haven't you? <laughs> Hello, Margot. Hello, dear. Barbara wants to see you. Tom is wearing a dinner jacket for manual work. He'll ruin it. Doesn't matter. But say you have to go to a function. Well, we don't go to functions anymore, Margot. No, you don't, do you? <laughs> Nevertheless, a dinner jacket in a muddy garden. Well, I tell you what, think of it as just a coat. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> well, that's it. That is all it is. No, Barbara. That's like calling salmon mousse fish paste. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Margot, as far as Tom and I are concerned, it doesn't really matter what it looks like, as long as it's serviceable. Oh, I'm sorry, Barbara. I didn't realise you were reduced to scraping the bottom of your sartorial barrel. <laughs> Funny, I thought we were just making use of the things we've got. Brave, brave, Barbara. Oh, how extraordinary. It must be a trick of the light. One leg looks orange and one leg looks blue. Right, you got it. Snazzy on me. But you can't wear those. Why not? Because one leg is orange and one leg is blue. <laughs> well, I don't mind if the pigs don't mind. <laughs> you never know, this could be the in gear for swine herds this year. Barbara. Hmm? Look at me. On Saturday morning, I shall be shopping in the high street. Wow. <laughs> and I shall have my checkbook with me. Yes? Well, call it an early Christmas present if you like. No, but I... thank you, Margot, all the same, but this stuff will do for us fine. I mean, honestly, now look, what is wrong with that? Just as a pair of working trousers. One leg is orange and one leg is blue. <laughs> well, kid, you're going to be a star. Really? Who was that on the telephone, Tom? The bloke who's going to make Barbara a star. He's a journalist. He wants to do a feature on us. No. Yeah, he got talking to Ron in the pub, and Ron mentioned us and self-sufficiency, and he wants to write about it. How extraordinary. And you said yes? Yeah, he seemed a nice sort of fellow. Just a few pictures, a bit of blurb. Shouldn't take long. It might be a bit of a giggle. Yes, why not? I could wear my new trousers. Barbara. <laughs> if one is to appear in a newspaper, one must be very careful about one's appearance. When is he coming, by the way? Tomorrow. Morning or afternoon? morning. Have you got any string, Barbara? I think I could fix that fork. Um, any special time in the morning? Left-hand draw, I think. Ta. Sorry, Margaret, you were saying? 
Oh, well, I just thought you might want me here to be help with something. No, I don't think so, Mother. Thank you. Oh. Fine. We'll leave it at that, then. You call me when the journalist is here. Should you want anything, anything at all? I don't think we want Margot for anything, do we, Bonner? No, I don't think we want Margot for anything at all. Thanks all the same, Margot. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'll say good night then. Good night. Good night. <laughs> I know what Margot could do. Yes, what? <laughs> Lend us a ball of string. Now, um, I'd like you to do something really interesting. Mm, um, could you uh, close in on, on each other? Uh, a bit closer. Just a bit closer. M Mrs. Good, could you turn and look at your husband? And I'm looking up his ear. Yes, I want to look uh, really natural. I don't usually stand about looking in his ear. He's <laughs> <laughs> here. Miss Coles, uh, I've got an idea. If we move along a bit, we can point at the pigs. Lovely. Right, out of the way, Piggy. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> now then, um, perhaps a bit more. Uh, right. Yes, Ready? if we go further along, we can um, get the trophy. Anything as long as you're happy. <laughs> <laughs> That's done, huh? Stuff, eh? Rather. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers. 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 Hmm. Yeah. Now. <laughs> Just a couple of questions, Mr. Good. I think that covers it. Um, have you any pet hates? Yes, I can't stand cheap wine. <laughs> no. Mrs. Good, I, I couldn't help noticing your, your trousers. Um, where did you buy them? Well, I got this leg from CNA and the rest is from Mart. <laughs> Pardon? They're mongrels. I made them up myself. Oh, I see. I see. It's very attractive. Um, Thank you. Just one more, Mr. Good. If uh, anyone was thinking of leading your sort of life, what advice would you give them? Well, uh, they'd have to marry Barbara first. They should be totally convinced of what they're doing, fit and healthy, and just mad enough to be safe. Uh, yes, I like this. <laughs> She's here again. <laughs> There's someone at the window. Good heavens, so there is. <laughs> oh, hello, Marga. This is a nice surprise. Barbara? Carl? One ball of string as requested. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know you had company. Oh, of course not. Mr. Coles, Mrs. Ledbetter. Oh, you must be the journalist. How do you do? Uh, yes, uh, how do you do? Oh, that's two T's in Ledbetter, by the way. <laughs> now, what can I tell you about myself? Well, I think it's true to say that we are Tom and Barbara's dearest friends. By we, I mean my husband, Jeremy, and myself. Jeremy is an executive in the plastics industry. I, of course, do not work, apart from the odd charity. <laughs> Hobbies? Well, it's no secret in Surbiton that I am one of the leading lights in the music society. Oh, by the way, we're giving the sound of music at the town hall from the 23rd to the 24th. Interestingly enough, Julie Andrews played my role in the film. Now, I think you may quote me as saying... You're not writing any of the stuff. No, I've got all I need for the article. It's about Mr. and Mrs. Good. 
Oh, I thought you might want some background information, some local colour. No, thank you. <laughs> oh, go on, Scoop. Give her a mention. Margot's played a very important part in all this. Really? Oh, yes. I mean, after all, she's had to live next door to a suburban revolution. A lot of people would turn nasty. Not Margot. No, nothing but support and encouragement. Yeah, I remember we used to try to keep pigs. Now, a lot of people poo-pooed the idea around here because of the smell. But <laughs> Margot didn't, did you, Margot? Well, I... Ah, she said, if you need pigs, you jolly well have pigs. Yes, and I'm sorry if I'm going to make you blush, Margot, but I'm going to tell Mr. Coles about the goat. Are you? Yes. <laughs> now, Margot has insisted on transporting our goat to and from the common for grazing in her own car. Mm, no reservations about the little pile of black cherries the goat leaves behind. <laughs> you see, I think you must mention Margot. Here, here to that. Thick and thin, fair weather or foul, Margot has been there. Like a truss. What? Constant source of support. <laughs> yes, I'll uh, see if I can get that in. But look, I must be on my way. Thanks very much. Goodbye. You won't Goodbye. forget the sound of music, will you? I'll do my best. <laughs> bye bye. Here we are. Thank you. What an awfully nice man. Mm. Nice creases in his trousers. And he had black shoes. That all points to him working for one of the quality newspapers, doesn't it? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Who'd be a freelance journalist, eh? Hopping here, dashing there, writing stuff on spec in the hopes of flogging it. A freelance? Yes, and he wore black shoes, too. But which newspaper is he hoping to sell the article to? Well, I don't know. The first one will buy it, I suppose. Don't you care? Not particularly. Well, I do. Why? Oh. Not for myself, Barbara. Don't think that. No, I, I just thought you would be interested. After all, an article about one. Well, not about one, about you. Well, most people would want to see it in print. Not that I... Because, after all, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't sit here all day. I must be off. I'll um, see you later. Oh, thank you for the string, Margot. Bye. That's the trouble with these Orientals. You can never tell what they're thinking. <laughs> Inscrutable. Yeah, come on, old legs. We've got work to do. Right, give me the creosote and I'll finish the job. <laughs> I say, I wonder if we will get in the papers. Why? Well, you never know. I mean, this might be the beginning of something big this time next month. I could be the centre spread of the Pig Breeders' Gazette. <laughs> Piglet of the month. <laughs> Jenny, is that papers? Yes. That paper boy must be late for school. Just emptied the entire contents of his sack through our letterbox. No, I ordered them. Good God, why? Because I have felt for some time we should be more catholic in our reading. I must say, this tabloid trash doesn't interest me in the slight. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I see. It's looking for our name in print time, isn't it? Nonsense. I'm doing it for Tom and Barbara. You know they can't afford newspapers. Well, they can be on this scale. Hello, 390... Seven, one, six, four. <laughs> what? Sorry, I can't hear you. It's rather a bad line. Could you speak up? Coles? Yes. Uh, 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 Mr. Coles? Yes. Margot Ledbetter speaking. Yeah. I'm sorry, I can't quite hear. Uh, yes, yes, that's better. Oh, the article, yes. In the what? The Observer. How wonderful! <laughs> yes, I'll tell them. Jenny, quick. Run and tell Tom and Barbara that we are in the quality press. The Observer. I do find running in the morning so vulgar. <laughs> <laughs> then walk quickly, Jenny. And we tell them, please. Anyway, why can't you go? You're the one who might just have sneaked her way into the corner of one of the photographs. Because I have a million calls to make. <laughs> ah, hello, Miss Mountshaft. Margot Ledbetter. <laughs> Miss Mountshaft, if I hinted that I could get our little production mentioned in The Observer... Yes, The Observer. Might 
that reawaken your interest in my design for the program cover? <laughs> oh. Oh. You know, I never really appreciated the taste of tea until we had to ration it. Shame we can't grow it ourselves. Yeah. Mind you, it's only really camellias, you know. I wonder if ordinary flowering camellias... No, that's about as sensible as you thinking we could keep silkworms and make my stockings from them. Oh, all right. <laughs> I'll just develop my genius for many forks. Fresh air about it this time of day, isn't there? Hello, Jerry. You're just in time for elevenses. You can't have elevenses at half past eight. <laughs> you can, you know. Just get out at six o'clock. Things so damn cheerful. Looking so damn healthy. There you are, Jerry. Have some tannic acid. Thank you. Well, have you just come around to cheer us up, or did you want something? Oh, yes, the news. <laughs> Your journalist friend just rang. He sold you to the Observer, no less. No, really? True. Well, good luck to him. <laughs> oh, I bet Margot's pleased. Pleased? You think he's just got a mention in the court circular? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jerry, I meant to ask you. What's a solvent for creosote? Isn't it a bit early for crosswords? No, no, no. This is real-life drama. We were spraying the chicken house, you see. One of them put his head around the corner and got it right in the parson's nose. <laughs> I don't know, take it to the laundrette or something. <laughs> anyway, why are you talking about chickens? Well, how would you like to be going about with creosote all over your bum? <laughs> That's not what I meant. Look, you've just heard that you're going to be mentioned in the national press. It's ego time. You couldn't seem to care less. There's a reason for that. What? We couldn't. <laughs> yes, but why? Well, what's it really worth? A nice little read that ends up around a piece of cotton chips. Mind you, if the article had been about Tom's water skiing... Oh, you're creosoting the chickens. No, no, you're missing the point. Worth. You used the word yourself. What is it worth? You could make on this, you know. What are you talking about? Here. Top up the tea. Lubricates the old grey matter. Ah, I know that expression. When he looks like that, he's planning something. Looks more like indigestion to me. <laughs> That's it. I've got it. Look, you two go about looking like a pair of tramps, don't you? Give me my tea bag. No, 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 no. Listen, listen. You live in what I can only politely describe as abject poverty. You mend tools that are only really fit for the junkyard. Hey, hands off, my gum's drying. And there you sit, passing up a golden opportunity to refurbish yourselves for nothing. God, look at you. But as much business acumen as a couple of characters out of the magic roundabout. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going on about? Well, I'll try to make it simple. Look. You go to local shopkeepers, and you tell them that you're about to be featured in a national newspaper. This makes you a local celebrity. Now, if a local celebrity allows local shopkeepers to use his name for publicity purposes, he is liable to be showered with free goodies. <laughs> what, you mean Tom and Barbara Goods shop at Jaime Cohen's Chinese Emporium? Exactly. Oh, get off. I couldn't sell an idea like that. <laughs> you couldn't, but I could do it for you. Truly? Yes. Perfectly simple business if you know how to handle it, and I do. What about it? Yes. No. All right. I think you're making a big mistake, Tom. No, oh, no, oh, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, just because I'm Lord and Master and Barbara are a mere chattel doesn't make my word final. Oh, God, you two are so liberated, aren't you? I expect you're now going to have a reasoned philosophical discussion. It's a little bit too early in the morning for that. Let me know what you've decided tonight. OK, Jerry. And thanks. Bye now. I think I'll go and rip out my telephone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. A reasoned philosophical discussion. You first. Well, I say yes. No. Nope. Yes. No. Nope. Yes. No. Nope. Yes. No. Nope. Conkers at ten paces. Now, look, seriously. It all smacks too much of commercialism. We've left all that behind, all that wheeling and dealing. I don't think so. I think it's just using our initiative. Or Jerry's initiative. We could do with some new stuff. Ah, uh, it seems dishonest to me. No. Well, it would be if we tried to stock up with a lot of things that we don't even need. But we only get things like dungarees and chicken wire and tools, things that we actually use. It's still a bit of bunce, isn't it? It's not us earning our own reward. Well, of course it is. I mean, the article would never have been written in the first place if we'd only grown two tomatoes in a window box. I mean, we're only newsworthy because of our efforts, and I think if there's any bunce attached, we've jolly well earned it. Yes, you're quite right. I was wrong. You are my idea of a man. Do you know that? Well, I've got no time for all this sexual inequality. I mean, we're partners, equal shares, even Stevens. 
Except in one department. What? I'm stronger than you are, and I can pin you to the bed any time I feel like it. <laughs> Rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Good, who will be appearing in this week's Observer, yes. Sorry, here. Oh, Tom. There we are. Right, wheel it in. A bit too big for that gun. Oh, Jerry, <laughs> have you gone mad? We told you only the things we need. What are we going to do with that? Sail it around our bath? No, it's not for your love. It's your agent's commission. <laughs> <laughs> Mantraft. Yes, I, I have seen the newspaper. But I... No, I... No, 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 I, I didn't, Miss Mantraft. I did not promise we would be in the paper at all. Oh, there was never any question of twisting your arm over the programme cover, Miss Mantraft. <laughs> <laughs> Very well, take that attitude. Do the cover the committee chose in the first place. See if I care. <coughs> Jerry! Come in. Well, did they spell lead better with two T's? They didn't spell it at all. I am not in the paper. Oh, dear. Oh, well, never mind. Neither are Barbara and Tom. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. Bloody hell! <laughs> Language, Jerry, it is Sunday. Well, get your hat on. We'd better go to church and start praying. <laughs> Good, the Observer's favourite model. <laughs> wearing a new brushed denim ensemble with the latest off the knee Wellingtons. <laughs> and denies any room over romance with Prince Rainier. You don't look right somehow. What do you mean? Well, you're not all rumpled and crumpled, your old rag bag self. Well, thank you very much. The last time I let you lie until nine o'clock on a Sunday morning. Why aren't you wearing your new dungarees? Oh, I'm saving them for the best. My coming out ball, things like that. Ah, oh, I see, yeah. Well, I must say, I must hand it to old Jerry. He really knew what he was talking about. These are lovely things, you know. Can't wait to use them. I should unwrap them first. What, get them dirty? <laughs> I would just like to say, Tom and Barbara, 
that this is the last time you involve me with the gutter press. Good morning. <laughs> I say, what are you talking about? The fact, Tom, that your so-called journalist's article has not appeared in The Observer. You obviously haven't got your copy yet. Well, we didn't think we'd bother. Why not? Well, we were at the interview. We heard what we said. Well, don't worry, Margaret. You'll probably be in next week's edition. This week, they probably have more important news, like the pound rallying to 65 pence. I say, I'm <laughs> frightfully sorry about all this. I've just had a telephone call from that chap, Coles. <laughs> the article was in The Observer, all right. It was not, Jerry. I scanned every inch. Not of the Ox and Bucks Observer, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> ox and Bucks Observer? Yes. You mean, <laughs> Margaret alerted the whole of Silverton for something that sells about three and a half copies? Two, if it's raining up there. Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I think that's priceless. It's a bit more serious than that, I'm afraid. Don't you see? All the shopkeepers who let you have all this stuff are hardly going to regard the Ox and Bucks Observer as the national press. Oh. You mean Father Christmas is going to want all his presents back, isn't he? Oh, dear. Thank goodness we haven't played with them. I can only say I am awfully sorry. I should think so, too, raising Tom and Barbara's hopes like that. It's like snatching the food from the mouths of starving babies. Now, see here, Margot, if you hadn't One got coffee here in the first two. place, we'd have got right, <laughs> Don't you insult my hearing, Boyle. Jenny. There has never been uh, anything minutes. wrong with my family's ears. Ah, well, I don't have yours. Slice of bread and cheese is not. No, I'll have so. It's just that you will mumble deliberately. Well, of course, the reason I'm why your family's not getting is because you're all trying to outshout each other. Well, thank you very much, Jerry. Are you staying for breakfast? Don't interrupt, Tom Peel. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Yes, after all, you two are the only ones who've really suffered. This must be a hammer blow to your hopes. Well, a tiny tap, Margot, just a tiny tap. I mean, we were fine two days ago before the stuff arrived, and we'll be fine when Jerry takes all the stuff back to the shops tomorrow. Along with his boat. Oh, yes. Ah, <laughs> oh, well, never mind. I mean, with trousers like these, who needs new ones? Exactly. Ah, oh, this stuff over here, well, it's OK, it's fine, but it's soulless, mass-produced now. My old fork. There he is. There's something of me in that. This repair I did, it wasn't just a man mending an implement, it was a friend, restoring a friend to health with affection. Look at that. <laughs> a bloody load of old rubbish. I told you this fork was no good when I found it in the shed. <laughs>